Standard 7th, Subject Civics, Chapter 5, Fundamental Rights, Part 2. Dear students, in the last chapter we studied some fundamental rights guaranteed by the Indian Constitution. We studied the right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation. In this chapter, we shall also learn about the right to freedom of religion, cultural and educational rights, and the right to move to the court. Means, we shall get acquainted with the judicial protection available for the fundamental rights. Let's begin with right to freedom of religion. India, we know, is an important secular country in the world. We have studied it in the previous classes. But you must be curious to know what the Indian constitution says about it, isn't it? It is included in a right to freedom of religion. According to it, each Indian citizen is free to practice any religion and to establish institutions for religious reasons. In order to broaden the scope of the right to freedom of religion, two things are not permitted. First, State cannot impose religious taxes that might be used to encourage a particular religion. That is, a constitution forbids religious taxes. Taxes cannot be collected in the name of religion. And second, religious education cannot be made compulsory in educational institutions that receive aid from the state. So, government-aided schools and other institutions cannot impose religious education. It cannot be made compulsory. Next, we shall learn about cultural and educational rights. We can see that there is a great diversity of festivals, foods and ways of life in a country. You may have noticed the differences in the different wedding ceremonies that you attended. Yes, we have attended various uh, wedding ceremonies and you will of course notice the difference in the celebrations. All these things are part of the cultures of different communities. Our constitution has given the different communities the right to preserve their cultural uniqueness. According to this right, people are not only free to preserve their own language, script and literature, but also make efforts towards their promotion. They can establish institutions for the development of the language. Let's find out and discuss. How many official languages are listed in the constitution? There are almost 22 official languages which are listed in the constitution. Which institutions have been established by the Maharashtra state government for the further development of the Marathi language? A few institutions like the Malwani Konkani Institute has been established by the Maharashtra state government for the further development of the Marathi language. Let's discuss. Do you think that all the work of the government and the courts should be done in Marathi in Maharashtra? What should be done to do so? So, all business of the government and courts instead of Maharashtra could be conducted in Marathi because Marathi is the official language of Maharashtra. The mother tongue of most people in Maharashtra is Marathi and uh, they will be able to know and understand better the official business if it is conducted in Marathi. The officials and the lawyers will not be able to take uh, undue advantage okay, because of the lack of knowledge of English language by the locals. People will be able to avail of the advantages of the welfare schemes if they are published in Marathi. It will also enrich Marathi language as technical, official and legal terms will be translated in Marathi. So, for this purpose, we can suggest that the government of Maharashtra should establish a separate department to undertake the translation of technical, official and legal terms in Marathi. People should be encouraged to speak and write in Marathi. So, this can be done. Now, let's learn about right to constitutional remedies. In case of encroachment of fundamental rights, the Indian citizen's right to get judicial remedies is also a fundamental right. This is called the right to constitutional remedies. This means that the constitution itself has provided for legal remedies in case people's rights get violated. 
so it becomes a constitutional duty of the court to protect the rights of the people so so many rights have been enlisted here so to protect these rights we have got a right to move to the court also sometimes the rights that are guaranteed to us by the constitution may get encroached upon and we are not able to exercise our rights means our rights are not fulfilled we are stopped from uh, getting the benefits of certain rights so this is called an infringement of our rights the court considers a complaint investigates it and in case it is convinced that the rights have indeed been infringed upon and injustice has been done to the aggrieved individual the court gives an appropriate verdict there are some examples some instances of infringement of rights for example arresting an individual without reason preventing a person from leaving a village or a town without giving a valid reason refusing food water or medicines to jail inmates are all instances of infringement of rights where the rights of individual are being violated so what can be done there are certain writs as constitutional remedies let's have a look writs as constitutional remedies courts have powers to issue various kinds of writs to protect the rights of the citizens so here we have five types of writs mentioned first habeas corpus second mandamus third prohibition fourth quo warranto and fifth certiorari let's understand them one at a time first habeas corpus it is a latin word and its meaning is to have the body it is issued to protect the personal liberty of an individual against the arbitrary action of state or private individual means it is protection from unlawful arrest and detention second mandamus its meaning is we command it is issued against a public authority or an officer and inferior courts for enforcing legal rights only it cannot be issued against president and governors so mandamus means the order of the courts the supreme court or the high court commanding the government to perform an action that is its duty to perform in interest of the public third prohibition its meaning is to restrain or to stop or you can also say stay order its meaning that we have understood is to restrain or to stop as the word says prohibition itself it is issued by higher courts to the lower courts to keep them within the limits means to prevent a subordinate court from exceeding its jurisdiction is done through prohibition fourth certiorari its meaning is law it is issued by higher courts to quash the order of a lower court so now difference between prohibition and certiorari is that the prohibition is issued at an earlier stage whereas certiorari is done at a later stage and the last one cure warrant to its meaning is what is your authority this is asked to that person who's been taken into consideration so it is issued to ensure that the person holding a public office is qualified to hold that office means quo warranto is issued to restrain a person from acting in an office to which he is not entitled for example a person who is 65 years old is holding a position in public office where retirement age is just 60 years so a writ of quo warranto can be issued by the court for the removal of this person from the office so this is how quo warranto can be used now is the reaction of this government official right or wrong we are supposed to answer let's have a look at what the situation is an officer tells a woman who presents all the documents for getting the benefits of a scheme for destitutes destitutes means the one who is without money food or home okay so uh, officer tells that woman you don't look like a destitute and refuses her the benefits of the scheme there is some scheme which gives the benefits to destitutes so the officer tells her you don't look like a destitute and he refuses her the benefits of the scheme so in this instance 
Do you think the woman's right has been infringed? Yes, infringements taken away. Yes, her rights are taken away from her. She has the legal documents. Then why is she being refused to get the benefit? So where should she go to get redressal? Means to get justice. Where she should approach? Yes, she should approach the court. So this way, there are examples where people's rights are violated and they can go to the court and inside the court, they can seek the justice. So because the fundamental rights are thus protected by the courts, citizens are able to exercise their rights. They can fulfill their roles as alert, responsible and active citizens. While considering fundamental rights, we also need to remember our duties. So in the next chapter, we shall study our fundamental duties. Do read the chapter for a better understanding from your textbook. Stay safe, keep learning and thank you.